Ranch. Hey, Long Riders! Welcome back to another one of our YouTube videos. And all you Trout Unlimited members watching November this meeting, it's on today's video, we're going to meet with the fish commissioners. For the Trout Un November's Trout Unlimited meeting, the RB Winter chapter of Trout Unlimited. And there's a lot of good news, a lot of stuff. You ain't going to want to miss this video. So let's get right to the meeting right now. And not contentious, but that's that's the way we like it. Uh, hey, one thing quick: try in the classroom. Uh, I was up at our, uh, our Central Regional Office on Tuesday when they were packing the eggs. 400 classes this year in Pennsylvania. Now, I don't know what, I think that is over half of the elementary school or schools. Wow. Wow. Um, awesome. From what I understand, but they were 400. That's a big number, um, which is nice. The women issue, female issue, uh, you know, that, that was brought up here. I mean, that's one of the things that's driving fishing, you know, throughout the United States, not just uh, Pennsylvania. And it's, uh, uh, Pennsylvania has a higher, I think we're about 11%. Most states are at five or less. So we do have a higher participation rate with women, but um, it's what our outreach, our outreach people are looking at, um, um, ways to engage, recruit, um, women into our, you know, into angling. So that's something, uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for us. It's a challenge for hunting. Same, same goes for them too. But uh, uh, we have a terrific outreach uh, coordinator, Amity Daniel, who is just uh, the last two years um, taking a proactive approach with this and setting up little groups throughout the Commonwealth. And now these groups are starting to web out and into different to different uh, areas whether it's with veterans or with women's groups or you know uh, all kind of stuff activities throughout the state and it's really nice to see that come to fruition and it's, it takes a lot of work and she's really the one the driving force behind it but uh, that's just the regards to getting women into our group here the boys group um Tens creek went through you guys, I, mean, I that you know the, the the journey started with that the day I got on the commission was which was in 2014. Um, you guys all know Bob and Adi, most of you know him. Bob started calling me daily, Eric. What can we do with Penns Creek? And uh, through conversation and uh, you know with him and try to settle him down a little bit. Um, um, it, it led to meeting with staff and looking at what we could do with the stretch and uh, uh, lo and behold it be, first became a cl Class A waters which only 2% of our streams in Pennsylvania represent Class A waters. Very small part, wild trout. Very small. And when the staff went out and did their uh, uh, surveys and samplings and found out, you know, the wild trout population in that section, um, it led us to um, classifying this class A, which was done in July, and then the special regulations that we have now, catch and release artificial waters only, which was the best way to protect those fish. And we did it. Um, um, was done in October. So you guys were all part of the journey. We kept our foot on the pedal and we kept at it, you know, and uh, that's what you have to do. And it could have gone the other way very easily if we didn't have the voices. Um, I've been on the commission four years. That was the most public comments I've ever read on any issue of any type since I've been on the commission. One single issue. We had almost 500, 560 comments from all of you. So um, that was, you know, that was a big driving force to it. And people from all over the country wrote in on us, not just Pennsylvania. So, um, um, 
we know the gem, we know the, we know the, and uh, it was an easy decision for me. Some of my colleagues, it was a little bit harder, but they went on. And, and our, we have a resource first policy, very simple. If we're not protecting the resource, then what are we doing? What am I doing as a commissioner? I'm serving the Commonwealth and the anglers and the voters and, and the citizens. And uh, so it was easy for me. It was a difficult one for some of the other ones, but they um, saw the light and saw the benefit of this. And, uh, um, but thanks to, I mean, you know, you guys all know the backstory in this room. But uh, it, it was, uh, it was, uh, you know, it was a great day, and I, I, I couldn't have been, I was the happiest guy in the world after that guy. So, um, I saw, you know, personally, I live on Section 3. If you're not familiar with that, that's the Poe Patty to Coburn section. Um, that used to be Trophy Trout for many years. It hasn't been, our section up there hasn't been stocked since 1992. So, we have a lot of wild trout up there, as a lot of you know. But uh, uh, it was trophy trout. They were able to keep two fish, 14 inches or bigger, from regulation to labor. Well, what was happening, everybody was killing the big fish. First of all, I knew I wasn't catching them. And second of all, you could see them on the banks. You know, guys would park, got them, and, you know, right there, and where the bones you'd see there, you know. It, it, we, never, we never caught those those nice 14, 15, 16, 17 fish. Um, they since changed that, as you all know, to, uh, about three years ago to uh, the, the, the miscellaneous slot limit, um, where it's seven to 12. Well, what's transpired since then, I know that personally through my little you know, fishing there all the time. Um, in our surveys, we're, there, we're catching and seeing bigger fish. But these nice sized fish are the ones that are spawning. They're propagating. We have a great habitat up there. It's working. And uh, um, uh, so let's hope we're going to do the same down in Section 5. We're going to monitor it. We're going to check it out like they do all the other Section 4 and Section 3. And, uh, um, you know, it's just going to be. 3.8 miles longer, I think, the stretch now with all this regulated water, but uh, it's a good thing. We don't make regulations for the animals. We make regulations to protect the resource. It's not the other way around. And people, you know, obviously, anglers and people get, you know, messed up with their, with their thinking. And, and, and again, it was simple for me. It was, uh, I had a lot of clarity with this, not just because I'm a Penn's Creek guy and live here, but it, it, it had to do for this special stream that we all know. We don't have a lot of this in Pennsylvania. So, good stuff. We'll see how it goes. January 1, it's, it's a, in effect. So, uh, uh, and we will be stocking the lower stretch with these fish that we were going to right here. We're going to stock the fish down below. Section six. <coughs> yeah, I just want to give you guys a little, um, just a little background on what we do with special special regulations in Pennsylvania. Um, we roughly have eighty six thousand miles of streams. Um, we have a total of nine hundred and seventy two stream sections and forty four. 4,500 miles that are managed for stock trout under Commonwealth inland regulations. That's open water, the normal stuff. Um, under those stock waters, which is 4,500 miles worth, we have 96 stream sections or only 199 miles that are under special regs. That's for stock trout. Um, so basically, 4% of stock trout waters are managed with special regulations. It's not a lot. That's stock trout. Now let's go to the wild trout. Roughly uh, uh, 150 miles of streams are managed for wild trout. It's like less than, it's a percent. So now we have another section here, 3.8 miles to add to that. It's not a lot. So when people say every you know, these wild trout protected everywhere, they're not. Um, 
I just wanted to highlight those numbers for you. There's only 49 wild trout stream sections that are protected in Pennsylvania right now, and it's 150 miles of streams. It's not a lot. So when people are, you know, when they, they're, they're saying that these waters, you know, every, there's a lot of protected water with special rights. There really is. There's not a lot for stock trout, and there's not a lot for wild trout. So, um, speaking of stock tr wild trout, um, sort of I mean, Spruce Creek, right? We bought um, Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission with the Game Commission, tied in with the West, uh, what is it, the Western Conservancy? Yeah. Western Pennsylvania Conservancy out of Pittsburgh. Um, we purchased um, Indian Caverns, if you guys are familiar with that. Are you familiar with that? So the Game Commission is going to, they, they wanted the cave, they're going to shut it off. It's already closed up for the bats. And we're going to take over that stretch of water there for fishing. And that's good fishing. I mean, open, I mean to get open water in Spruce Creek, it's going to be... Uh, yeah, and we're actually... Um, and I think it's even moving forward. I mean, it's really going quick on this process. I don't know all the specifics, but there's property owners that are going to give up leases for us to let anglers come through the, that area. I don't know how it's all going to, you know, uh, work out at the end, but it's uh, it's a great stretch of water. Where's it located, Eric? I mean, I know where Spruce Creek is, but is what's the town? It's right above. It's right below Spruce Creek. There's a town there, right? Spruce Creek. I think there's a town of Spruce Creek, though. Is there? There is a town of Spruce Creek. It might be Huntington. Uh, Huntington, it's up by Alexandria. I don't know. I used to go there as a kid. Indian Cavern. See, I don't know. Went on field trips. <laughs> Between Ag Progress Days and Spruce Creek, correct? Yes. Yes. It's right along that road, whatever that road's called. Uh, yeah. So that, there's going to be another wild trout fishing opportunity. Uh, evidently, it's it's from. I mean, there's a lot of fish there now. It's, it's uh, I don't know when it's going to open up for the public, but it's something we're we're working this jointly with the uh, game commission, and uh, I guess they're going to have trails up there to hike around some property. And, Is this the one where the that running on Route 22, County, when they were enlarging Route 22, they blasted and discovered the cave. That cave's been there forever. Yeah. It's been there forever. It was like they had a store there where you could buy, you I know, artifacts and, you know, chemical. <laughs> yeah. I graduated from high school there in 1968, so. Yeah, it's the same place. You know, yeah, someone owned it. I guess it was privately held for years or forever. Alexander yeah, I just brought that up. I mean, I thought that was uh, could be an interesting uh, venture, and you know, we haven't decided how we're going to do it. I mean, I, I think it's going to be obviously special reg, and maybe um, you could buy like a day there, pay like a rod fee to go there. Because, I mean, there's a lot of fish there. Though. So um, I don't know, we'll see. but that's in our area too. Um, that's real close to. Yeah, it's not that far. That's something else I want to. Now you're talking about wild trout. And a lot of you guys have fished all over. Any questions about pens while we're on it? I mean, we're good to go. It's Are you going to do signage along that section? Yeah, and by the way, can I have all your signs that you guys have? Catch and release appreciated. I want to post them all over my property. Sure. <laughs> we have some already. Chris, figure out how to modify that sign. Um, Jay, you're going to be posting that area, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll put this out posters. there. Uh, if, if some people are kind of willing to, you know, they drop some posters off to some people or whatever, that yeah. could be oh, you could beneficial. Post by uh, I was hoping we could. And this is something I could talk to you about, maybe getting a big sign that we have on the higher section, you know, something similar to that as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, something that's slapping a thousand posters on a thousand different trees, all just watching it torn down in two weeks. Um, the right to frustration as a WCO. Uh, I go to my ass and just remove signs. Well, we'll have to get some up initially. Yeah, well, we'll get some up but initially. I think some would be nice, like on the um, catch and release stretch. I have, a, I have a large post order in. I'll double check it to make sure I don't need anything else. Um, but yeah, I think crowdsource that a little bit. We should get a stack. 
for the yeah. last day. Because you can pass so. them out to everybody. Here. My neighbor will do it. <laughs> Charlie will put them up for us. <laughs> That's a good idea with the big sign, too. I'm you, are you going to move the big sign down? Street? Yeah, it's above my pay grade. Um, I will make a recommendation, but... We'll put another one down there. Double. Yeah. Yeah. People don't read signs anyway, so it's... No, and I'll put this out there. In reality, it's probably going to be a lot of citations and a lot of people learning the hard way uh, the first year or two. Um, I know that I'm, I'm talking to people here that it's you know, respect the rules, play play you know the right way, but it's the people who don't want it that are going to still be in there doing what they want to do. Um, I'm going to run into that. I'm going to need eyes and ears on the stream. Uh, for you got you those of you that don't know, uh, my normal coverage area is four counties. Um, I'm also looking like I'm covering half of Center County uh, due to another officer being out uh, on an injury um, this this upcoming year. Um, so I'm going to need eyes and ears on that stream. So it's going to be a thing. So nothing's no. Nothing's no. <laughs> but we'll have you there. Don't worry. I'll be there. Yeah, go ahead. Is there any way, I mean, I'm new to this, but I keep my ears open. Is there any way that you could go with a uh, PR campaign with the campers that have rented lots behind Union County Sportsmen's Association? That's a different section. It's a different yeah. section? That's yeah. section six. So that's out of this out of this section. Out yeah. of this section. Yeah, we don't, However, they're below it. However, comma, they're not happy. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a certain you know, I, I, they got everything all stirred up. Put it this way, I mean, we dealt with this, um, I deal with it on Pine Creek. I could, you know, I deal with it on the section, I live on section three. I mean, it's, it's, what happens is after time, things work its way out. Pine Creek, we changed the ratings, you know, it's a delayed harvest, catch and release now on the, the stretch, um, you know, it used to be delayed harvest. Now it's just catch and release. And uh, you know, for years, um, it, it's, it gets better every year. And I think our, I, I think even our officers get less calls for that up there. I mean, he does. I know he does. Part of it's education. I mean, I'm sure Jacob here will be educating people, talking to them on streams, not citing them, but it, telling them, guys, this is catch and release. And you know, um, I mean, because these guys don't cite as many speakers as they should, but they, that's just the way that's, you know, they'll be professional out there and tell them that. But I, and that, you know, we saw that on Pine Creek and a lot of our special rates. It just takes time. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Rod. What's the official boundary line for the end of the stretch? Yeah, they have a line. It's it's that, what's that road called? Uh, Jolly's Road. Right? No, it's above it. Uh, Medi Lane. A Medi Lane. I don't know the exact. They have a GPS coordinate. They have a so GPS. It will actually be based on Medi, the end of the Medi lane. Or no, it's a Medi. Medi will be yeah, and I, like they did above on the catch and release stretch, that you know, I used to get calls from from somebody who used to call. Oh, what's his name? Sherwin. Sherwin. Eric, the line's off. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they use GPS. I mean, come on. Sherwin. <laughs> Yeah, so they'll GPS it. I don't know if they'll mark it. They're not going to mark it. Will they mark the end of stretch? I mean, if they put if they put the sign up like they do did on the upper section, it's just going to be a matter of trying to fill it out. I need to figure out where the bottom. I, I know it's just above Jolly's Grove, but I just wasn't sure where the yeah. exact bottom. Of that well, he'll have is. to get the GPS coordinates. Yeah, it, it's just there. a matter of that's you know where where that coordinate lines up with the road. That's where you start the posters. Um, and, and as I said, it's going to be a learning experience. And like I said, I said citations. That's going to be for our egregious violators. Um, understand that a lot of it's going to end up being education, but there are going to be people there that are going to have their limits. Catch and release, artificial or something. Yep. So it's uh, it's like the section. Does anybody fish the section on Middleburg, um, the late harvest section there uh, that was recently changed to Keystone? Yeah, have you guys fished that? It's Go killer. Who fishes that? I don't know why. It's killer. Who fishes it? Um, needless to say, that has been delayed harvest for years. In there. Well, I still get people yeah. taking fish out of that section. I mean, it has been that way. Yeah, since been I know a kid that goes down there. So. Yeah, big fish. I so. see that. 
That's a middle creek, the upper section of middle creek. It's a good stretch. It's a, it's a keystone stretch. select water. We're actually looking to extend it a little bit because the habitat's so good there. Where uh, are you looking to go upstream or down? I, I talked to Jason. They may extend it a little bit. Uh, it's uh, yeah. not that long. I'll talk it's to Jason about it. It's the delayed harvest stretch up there. Yeah. We have 16 keystone select waters, and that was selected as one of them. Again, they're habitat driven. The water quality, the width, the structure. Um, yeah, if you guys want to go play with some big stockies, you know, just no time, it's a good place. So, um, I don't know, guys. I don't, I don't have much anything else. What, Chris? Go ahead. You guys have a, 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 a policy on the artificial damming of the stream. Is you that mean like, uh, like private, like, so when you say artificial damming, do you mean just like Joe Blow put the dam out in the stream, yeah. or do you mean like a big corporation go around? No, Joe Blow. All right, so anytime you have a complete occlusion of the screen, a stream, basically a dam all the way across. Um, now I understand that, you know, when you have six-year-old kids building, you know, their Indian dam across the stream, kind of turn a blind eye or you knock, you knock a hole in it and say, hey, guys, please don't do that again. Um, but if you have somebody that's seriously trying to occlude a stream, you know, it's, it's a substantial blockage. Um, that is a violation uh, at, a, at a minimum. Um, a lot of times it ends up as a warning situation. Uh, other times it ends up at a minimum of two hundred fifty dollars citation, and it's all on a case by case. And that a lot of that comes down to cooperation of the individual uh, that, that we're dealing with. So you're not allowed to do it, right? Right. right. So that gets. I guess they that. do it every summer. We kick it out and they put it back. In. Is that considered? Yeah. Yeah. I don't worry that. I would think so. It yeah. depends on how much how much of the flow is blocked. Um, dams are usually pretty apparent. Uh, we we look for basically uh, as it's written, it's, uh, it interferes with the the migration, the passage of fish. So we're talking dams up to the surface. Um, now somebody put like you know rocks you know this high, the water's freely flowing over top. It's not really causing a flow issue. Not really an issue. But I mean I've seen I've seen some streams. Um, you know that they've had seven stone dams in a row, and that stream uh, basically becomes a series of ponds for a while. And it is all on a case by case. Um, I don't want to say one way or the other. Um, there's a lot of other stuff gets involved with it. Um, there are some weird old DEP regulations out there or permits uh, that you know 30 years ago and stuff that's all been grand, you know, 30, 50 years ago, something that's been grandfathered through. You know, it's like this has no business being on a stream in, in 2018, but it's here because it's all here. Um, so that's always something to be aware of. But yeah, please bring them to the North Central Regional Office's attention, and it'll be something I'll, I'll address on a case-by-case -case basis. So. Question: Is the stream Penge Creek and Colburn up there? Is that a place they want to talk about? Section from Colburn, the section to Spring Mills. To Spring Mills, yes. Why did they stop Rainbow Valley? <laughs> Well, that's a good question. That's why we're asking. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a fishing creek too downtown. Old policy. It's called historical. They were old. It's an old historical area, and, and um, the, the, the staff, um, um, you know, with the with with the number of people that fish those areas, they felt they could stop. Do I agree with it? That's a different story. But I just wondered why they stopped that. And yeah. They, there, there's, there's four or five streams in Pennsylvania that are Class A water, which they still stop. There's four, four or five. Um, Fishing Creek in downtown Mill Hall, I believe. There's a small stretch. Up there, that small stretch. Um, and then there's maybe two or three more, if that. So, um, um, but Class A is the best of the best. Um, you know, these are these brownies are naturalized. We have natural. Actually, we have naturalized rainbows, I believe, on the yacht. Two spots. Two spots. Two, for two streams. Two streams. Yeah. No, I, I you know, I don't believe it, but <laughs> naturalized on the yacht. But we do. I mean, that's really our. Well, the brook trout's our state trout, but. Um, these brown trout have been here over 100 years now. Yeah. Is Pence uh, considered navigable waters? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so high water mark. Is that is that what it is? 
but you can't walk through my property right now. There's a sign up for you. <laughs> I, got, I got a little note here. I have one of my questions on the Penn Street. It's, it's navigable. Since he brought that up. It's navigable. navigable. Like Fishing Creek in Columbia County is navigable. There's people, there's some, well, there, you know, there's issues. There's a lot, you know, and it's all based on 200 year old history of commerce in Pennsylvania. I mean, it takes more than a constitutional lawyer to understand some of this stuff. They, have, they really go back and dig through, but yeah. Okay, their pr problem they're having with the gentleman stock in the property there, just upstream from the trestle bridge on, on Penn Street. If you would get in below the trestle bridge and you're saying you can stay between the high and low water mark and walk upstream? Which trestle bridge? Well, where the, where the tunnel is on what I, what I call the... And they stocked there? Gilbert. I know. Gilbert. Down, downstream from the hook. Guys, you, you guys, I know where I'm going, but I don't know how to explain it. You know where I mean? The, the bridge that goes across at the top of the parking lot. On the far side oh, of the tunnel. Oh, oh. Yeah. I didn't... Because there's a guy that we used to always fish in there. Now they're oh, all, all yeah, sorts of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I talked to Jonas and all, all the guys up there about that. I, you know, I don't know the problem. You know, you know the law of the property. I can't answer that. I know it's the high water mark. So you can't walk down the trestle or down the from the trestle. Once you get in the water, you're all right. Yeah, but how about the the uh, the old railroad bed? He owns that. He owns the trestle. I know, but and he is that posted now. He's always posted that that yeah, guy. That's Will. Now. There's another guy that owns that little property right over the trestle bridge. Has a little shack down there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's posted. I, I didn't see any posters last time. Yeah, I, I, was I, was just, I was just there. I was just there two weeks ago. And he's got a poster right there at the where you can park at the, yeah. at the, at yeah. the tunnel there. At the I don't know about that. that. That's a DC and R bridge. You could do whatever you want there. I don't yeah. know. So, but well, we used to just walk down. Yeah. There, but, so in theory, even if it is this property, it does have a posted. If you walk over the trestle bridge, access the stream below the trestle bridge, and walk upstream, staying in the water, I'm fine. I just I wish I was more familiar with it before. Yeah. I don't like to comment on these because uh, they become trespass issues with PSB, and when it becomes trespass issues, I uh, <laughs> yeah I deal with them on yeah, case. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just not familiar with trespass. Don't you there. know this stuff? So. <laughs> That's why we have these guys. No, there, there is a gentleman up there that posts both sides of that stream. I know, and it's but guys get in the water and they fish it. I know they do. So, so the best advice I have to everybody, whenever whenever something's questionable like that, keep your feet away. Uh, That's the best way for for CYA. CYA. Um, it just becomes a headache. And whether or not you may know what your legal rights are, that doesn't mean your landowner with the gun does. Um, that's the other thing to keep in mind. So if you want to end up in a fight with the dude, say, I'm in the right, I can be here because you know this is this is Commonwealth property. Um, you know, tell try telling that to certain people. I will go over well, I promise. I mean, one of the things about Pence Creek, I mean you guys all know this. I mean we let our properties open for people. I mean it's very we're lucky. It's not the Delaware, it's not some other streams throughout the you know. We all let our properties open, and um, and that's the balance, you know. And I understand everybody's point of view about the, you know, whether it's special regs or stocking. I mean, look. So you, you know, you have those social issues that we're trying to address. But uh, you know, I think in time, if you educate people and talk to them and communicate, I mean, everybody should be, you know, hopefully on the same page about the resource that, which, which really this was all about, you know, in section five. Was it about us and TU? Had nothing to do with TU. I mean, you guys. Tell me, Jeez, tell me. I mean, I mean, yeah, we're just a small part of people there. We did an annual survey, and we're hoping to do another one up on Section Three again. Um, um, they did an annual survey up in our section about four years ago before they changed the regulations, and. Uh, they started on the opening day of Trout and they finished on Labor Day. And there was a guy out there. Did you guys get any of you guys get interviewed from him? Um, extraordinary data. Um, I hope we can do it again. And I hope we can do it down below at some point. I mean, it just comes down to finances and whether we have the money to. 
But up in our section up there, and you guys are well aware of this in the section four and section five now, I think there was uh, people from 39 states were on section three. That's a lot of darn, 45 counties in Pennsylvania were represented on section three. That's, that's, that's extraordinary. And it's the same probably the whole way up and down Pence, as you, as you know. And that's the, I mean, that's the, and that was one of the things in the comments. We had people commenting from all over the country. It just wasn't Pennsylvania. There was people from Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Ohio and Montana. And uh, I thought that was extraordinary. 45 counties were represented. And that's a lot of darn states, too. Um, Section three, here is one of the things, and you guys, it's probably similar to section five. Flies only were 389 out of 529 people that were surveyed. So it was 74%. 14% bait, 9% wars. It's probably the same down there, too, don't you think? I don't know. So, I hope, to, I hope that we could do these types of surveys especially down in that section, as they do up in our section. Um, but, uh, yeah, go ahead. You mentioned earlier that uh, you were analyzing uh, changing the uh, Section 5. You had over 500 uh, respondents. Uh, what was the percentage of those in favor of changing it to class A? The night of the meeting, it was 83% at that point. At, at the public meeting, there was 83 percent, and I think it was 75 percent. Um, 75 percent of the ones that wrote in were in favor of it. Now, if you disqualify the ones, there was a number of people that wrote in that did not pertain to Penn's Creek. But I think the percentage would have been higher. They were, um, but and the, and the staff went through great, I mean, they go through great extents to qualify everything and collect all this data. I mean, they, they do a great job on it. They spend a lot of time on this. This just doesn't happen. But, uh, um, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you guys were part of it. Rick, Bob, Jerry, you guys were all down there at some point. I mean, that makes a difference. Yeah. Uh, before uh, Mid-Atlantic Fly Fishermen went out of business or closed up, and I can't remember what year it was, but they published uh, an article in there about Penn's Creek, and this was from the bridge of Glen Iron to Penn's Cave. And for a two-week period, and they just talked about the Green Drake, they came out and estimated that in that section, brought in $50,000 per stream mile for that into the economy from outside of the local area. And if you stop at the, I don't know how many miles that is, but everything above Spring Mills and that, there's very little, there's very little private or uh, public fishing up there. So it's from Spring Mills all the way down through that and down to uh, the Glen Iron Bridge uh, that really impacted that study. So you subtract the miles from Spring Mills up to the cave, and then you know, uh, you know, just just for one fly and for a two-week period, that's unbelievable. And what people don't realize <coughs> in this area is we're going to get a lot more people coming into the area that's now going to start fishing here. And I think this last year, in uh, five national magazines, I've read articles on Penn's Creek, and three of them just dealt with the Green Drake alone. Yeah, I mean, you guys know the story. Um, section three, the fishing, the biomass has gotten better since they changed the regulations. And again, that's why they put the slot limit in there. Um, seven to 12 inch, you know, two fish, seven to 12 inches. But over the last four years, they come back, we survey, we're seeing better, bigger fish, more 15. I caught two 20 inch fish there. I never caught 20 inch fish there in my life. Yeah. 
They weren't there before. The same one. It was the same one. Let's see. It was a Rokawa. But they're and they're and so that probably should have been catch and release. That would be the next endeavor. I think they. I think they. I mean. I mean, the only way to protect, to see if we're going to see a, a, an increase in the bottom mass, you've got to control it somehow by, without the harvest or the type of war. And, you know, the, you know I, I know there's studies out there, you can, you know, um, and that guy referenced them at the board meeting um, on um, bait versus flies, and um, that was a very controlled environment. My question to the doctor who did that study was, would have been, um, um, I want to see you catch that fish more than one time with bait and see if it survives. You know, catch it three times. You know, can you catch that fish three times? But, uh, they only did the study of catching the fish once and then they report those numbers. But it's all good. It worked out well. So. It did. <laughs> Eric, I keep hearing about gill lice problem and stuff like that. Is that that the last public meeting went to, it's not a problem, yeah. as you said it is. Yeah, it's, I, it's, uh, it's a concern. We're concerned about it. Um, we have, there's roughly 65 commercial fisheries in Pennsylvania that grow fish for Pennsylvania. They ship them to Maryland, they ship them to Ohio, ship them wherever, restaurants, streams, and uh, last year, um, there was this gill lice. I mean, it's happened a couple times right now where they, we, we identify gill lice and wild trout streams. They, we target it to co-ops or somebody putting fish in. Um, they euthanize all the fish. They clean up the, the, the raceways, and then they're back in business again. But it's a, it's a concern. These commercial fisheries are under the Department of Agriculture. So, um, and, and uh, so they're not under us from a regulation or management standpoint. So, uh, but yeah, it's it's a uh, um, it's a concern. We, our executive director last year, when he found out that these commercial entities might have gill lice, he put out a um, uh, he, he put a moratorium on people allow unless you're unless the hatchery was certified by a veterinarian that it didn't have gill lice. You could not sell them to, you know, the Mifflinburg Legion to put them on Buffalo Creek. And that, now all these, they're, they're, now some of these guys are going through and getting these, they're, they're getting certified and there's other ones that are fighting it now. This, this gill lice, so. Yeah, it's, we have to keep an eye on that ball. It's gonna be a concern going forward. Sort of like the chronic wasting disease, you know, that came out of our deer farms. Pennsylvania is the biggest deer, one of the biggest deer uh, producers in the country. But uh, yeah, it's a concern. You have the brook trout will affect the brook trout. I don't think the brook, I don't think the rainbow trout gill lice will affect the brook trout. I think it's their species, like the brown. So uh, I don't know what our solution is going to be to it. But uh, some of these commercial businesses are really. They're, they're getting together and I mean my thing is how can you stock a stream with infected fish they're gonna kill wild brook trout I mean how can you do that knowingly now they're gonna say the gill lice are always in the, I don't know what they're gonna say but uh, it's gonna be interesting I, I hope we could, I mean I'm sh certainly I think there's a solution to it but there is a concern for it too I, I, I do so yes sir a year ago, we talked about the Fish Commission being broke. Where do we stand today? Good, excellent question. We are still uh, living within our means. Um, our budget's about $55 million. We have probably, we have a lot of vacancies. Our, our WCOs were down probably 30, and we have, you know, our departments are down. Um, that all ended, will end it this year when all these bills we had into play are just going to go right out the door and we have to, we have to start all over. 
Um, when I became president in July, and I don't know if you read it, I, I, I got commitments from the Senate and the House leadership, and they wrote, they, it's in writing, that they would help us secure funding next year, 2019. Uh, are they going to follow through with that? It, I mean, starting July, January 1st, we're back to square one on our efforts to get funding. So it's an excellent question. I'll tell you, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a haul again. Senate seems to, Senate passed the twice for us funding. I mean, they get it, you get it into the House, and I, you know, that's a whole other world, that House of Representatives. I mean, Representative Keller's well aware of it. He's, he's probably going to help champion it from the House standpoint, but uh, what I've learned from that process is I could talk to all the representatives in the world, but unless you talk to the big kingpin, that bill's not going through. I mean, what about we, John's replacement? John's replacement started yesterday. And uh, yeah, John, um, as you know, John Orway retired. Hopefully we could get him in for a meeting. I should try to get him as a guest speaker. He lives up in Lamar. Give him a break. Uh, he's, you know, John, he'll talk. He was just at the Bucknell. He did a great job there at that Bucknell River Symposium. But uh, yeah, the new executive director started Tuesday, Tim Schaefer. Um, he had worked under John as his legislative liaison for the last eight or nine years. Um, about 11 months ago, he got the DEP snagged him. He was an undersecretary, some kind of underwater water area. Um, Tim's well-schooled. He's an attorney. Um, he's got a master's in I don't know, water. Some type of you know aqua you know some type of water degree. He's 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 he, he hit the road run. He hit the uh, ground running on Tuesday. So I think he's going to be good. Um, you know the legislative part's always the same, and I we're going to be pushing it again. And I think we're going to run into the same deal. What happened last time is we pushed these guys, and our executive director and the board backed them. I mean, um, to uh, get a license increase, and these guys just would not budge, and you know, and then they, you know, then that, that's when everything blew up. And I, I hope it doesn't happen again. But. I have a question: Is the Susquehanna River in air? Is our bass coming back? Where does that stand? John is champion. <clears throat> yeah. Um, the counts have been great. As a matter of fact, I just talked to some of the biologists. Uh, who were out these last couple months sampling. They did a lot of the sampling in the fall. Um, we relaxed the rules this is it for next year? Should be. 2019. It's not closed anymore. We we lifted the ban on fishing in May. Remember we had that month for yeah. 10 years? You can't target bass. You, or you could you weren't even allowed to fish for them, right? So you could, take, could take them out of the water. Yeah. So, so go ahead. So, and this is this is kind of one of those. The I'll just get to the practical from the WCO WCO standpoint because I cover from the fire dam below down to down to the county lines. Um, the, the the official rule was catch an immediate release, cannot target bass. Um, the issues the issues that you ran into. Um, everybody loves to do. This. Um, the other issue that we were running into, uh, bass are, you know, they're a predator fish, walleye are predator fish, there's lots of other fish that share that same uh, sort of biosphere in terms of what they're feeding on. Um, so we were running into issues with, I'm not fishing for bass, I'm fishing for walleye. Okay. Um, so it becomes more of a possession issue. So my understanding of the new rule is it's going from catch and immediate release to, to basically catch and release, which just gives a little bit more leeway with, with handling the fish. And then and the season is not closed. I mean, you could catch bass now in May where you weren't permitted to. I mean, legally you weren't permitted to do that. But it was so hard to enforce anyway. Yeah, from, there was a five week period. Yeah. Right May to the first week of June, as you can know. And that went on for 10 years. Um, um, Executive Director Arway instilled that when 
the river was impaired based on what our biologists are telling us that the numbers are back up there. This is going to be a tough year. I, uh, I'll tell you what, I just talked, not maybe for the bass, but the trout. Um, we're talking about Penn's Creek. Um, I was talking with uh, um, one of our biologists in fisheries, and with this high water now on Penn's, the spawn may be so, negative. Because, I mean, we, you, you guys know. I mean, I've never seen it like this. Jerry, have you seen it like this? So hopefully there's a window in the next couple weeks where the water levels off a little bit, uh, which could happen, but uh, he said this may affect the spawn. But in regards to the river, yeah, there's still a lot of issues with that, and no one has answers for them. You, you know, you have these four water columns that have different dynamics in them and um, different pollutants, and, and it's, so... It's still, it's still, uh, yeah. Now you got DMP involved with that DMP. I mean, that's a big player on this. So, I think the Chesapeake Bay, I mean, that, that that commission's really, you know, they they're really on top of that. One of those, there's a number of those Chesapeake Bay agencies, but uh, we are too. We certainly. Are. I don't know if that answered you or not, but it's it's still look. I, it's still volatile in my eyes. It could go the other way. John was a spearhead on a lot of it. John's going to be missed. I mean, look, John, he said it the way it was. I, I you know, and as you all know, he knew it, and uh, um, he did. He did more for Pennsylvania than fisher, fishing in PA that I can. You know, he's up there with Ralph Auburn, probably more. Um, but uh, he, you know. Um, he's going to be messed. Tim's going to be. Tim will be good, though. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him. Different approach. Um, John was a scientist, so no one could buffalo him. That was the nice thing about it. <laughs> you know, people could. You know, he knew the science. He knew the biology, and I, 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 I love that. In fact, he, you know, people could throw him a slider, and he, he, he would pick it up right away. But, I mean, he was one of the best. We, we were lucky to have him. And I, was, I, I feel fortunate just to work with him. I learned so much from him. Yeah, right. Oh, I thought you were. No, no well, thanks again. I, no, I appreciate it. You know, everybody uh, in regards to Section 5, you get it. You know, Bob Minotti back in 2014, we started this process. And um, oh, yeah, yeah, he would call me every night and day. And then he learned how to text on his phone. <laughs> and he was texting me all the time. And then, uh, oh, geez. It's, it's hard to believe. I thought of him that day. He's smiling. Um, he is smiling. I, I, after that day was over, I got upstairs and, the, and I just sat there and I said, Bob, you gotta love this. I, I really. Uh, but and there's more people. All the, all the people. All the, when we dedicated that bench, everybody down there was involved. You know, the, the Johnson family was calling me you know, from Dave Johnson. I guess is Dave is Junior his son. That's his son. So there was a lot of interest with people. I learned a lot about Penn's Creek from people like Dave Johnson Jr. He talked about his dad, Fred Johnson. Did you know Fred? Yeah. He was a yeah. He was a big yeah. yeah. So there was many way before me. I mean, I happened to be at the right place at the right time. Thank God, and uh, you guys too, for, because this was one shot we had at this. I, um, I see that with things. If you don't keep the pressure on, and you don't get the I mean, we all have good intentions, but with with a little bit of force and a little bit of togetherness, you can get things done. And I see things go the other way real quick. They go sideways if, if there's not enough uh, interest or a public opinion. And Dave Rothrock, who comes, you know, Dave, he, he, you know, he was a good voice, and we all were. So it all made a difference. So that's it. We need money. We're still going to be pushing for money. We got a new executive director. Um, there's all kind of stuff coming. Up. And will you be kind of sportsman still stock pension? Will that? Yeah. 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 Charlie. <laughs> not up there. Not not there. I hope not up there. Charlie's proven below. Ralph uh, Moyer is now the. Is he the guy now, yeah. Ralphie? Yeah. yeah. Ralph knows the deal. Yeah. 
I, I don't think there's going to be any of the issues that, that some people have kind of looked at. I think, it'll, I think it's going to work itself out. Um, I, and I talked to people downstream. They were happy we're putting fish down there. Now, yeah. Some, some are, some aren't. But So here's where I'm at because, you know, I'm the guy that's with the stocking truck every time. Um, I'm going to be feeling that section out. Um, so if you guys are out, you see me out there, let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Understand that it's always a balance for me when it comes to the stockings. Um, as much as I'd like to stop every 50 feet and you know put a bucket of trout in, uh, time-wise and, and balancing all the other things I have to do, uh, it, it's a balance. It's a, it's a big balancing act. Um, it's going to take some time. It's going to there's going to be some heartache, uh, but we'll get that, that section adjusted. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be a really good thing. It's a nice stretch of water. Uh, the, you know, it, ha it has fish there, but now it's going to have a lot of fish. It's going to be more public access, but hopefully, hopefully people are going to utilize that and. That deters some of the possible issues we may have upstream with people wanting to continue to use the resource as it was, not as it is, um, in terms of in terms of regulations. So, my fingers. Flip the tables on both you guys. What would you like to see from the chapter? How can we help you guys? Yeah, my apologies. Um, for me, it's eyes and ears. Okay. Um, when you guys have have sea violations on the stream. Um, like I said, I'm covering I'm covering four counties, and that's my normal day to day. Uh, and that's you know the summary stuff all the way up to the criminal stuff I get into. It gets, it gets involved at times. Uh, if you guys see somebody you know some big poaching fish, and understand that you know when the 14 year old kid is up there and they're you know they've got a couple of fish, or whatever. Sometimes it's better to say, hey guys, you need to put those back. You know, and if you see them four or five times, different story. But you know, you got an adult, you know, they're standing under the sign and they've got a creel and a half full of trout. You know, it's it's very, very different. Um, get a license plate. Don't get in a fight over over a couple fish. I know you guys are passionate about it. Do not get in a fight over a couple fish, though. It's, it's never worth it. Um, you know, be willing to come to court. It's going to be 15 minutes to, to an hour of your time, usually 15 minutes to half an hour. Uh, be willing to come to court, you know, send me pictures, give me pictures of the license plate and go, Yep, that was the guy. He had seven fish. And if, if you're willing to testify, give me a picture too of who he was. Um, I had some great preseason trout cases uh, down on like Wilshire Moke and stuff. Um, I, had, I had a really active community down there because people were tired of people being being in there preseason. And in, in the kids sections, you know, we have adults in those kids sections. I mean, I have a poster on every other tree down there when the season's in. Um, so I just, you know, eyes and ears. I can't be everywhere at once. Uh, call the North Central Region Office. My cell phone, I know, is rolling around with a few people here. Um, don't call me for every little thing, but if it's, if it's a violation, I have this thing on me, as you just heard, 99% of the time. How many deputies do you have? None. We need, we, he needs deputies. Thank I, you for watching all the if, if you need any, <laughs> if you know any, he I'm needs out, deputies. Guys. It's getting better. Get better. It's a um, tough. It's, we need deputies. I have I have one guy who's who's coming on. He's he's a he's a medic for life flight. Uh, he's extremely good. He's out with every every one of my stockings. Um, he gets it. Uh, he fishes. He fishes trout. He fishes bass. He's he uh, he's getting getting. He likes doing the boating enforcement, the public safety that comes with that. Uh, I mean, he's out with me all the time. He's going to be awesome. Uh, we're just we just need a class. Once that happens, I at least have one. So um, it's just a matter of time. What are your qualifications that you're looking for? Somebody knows. Somebody. We'll pass some information then later. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's uh, there's there's a whole slew of things that take me a couple minutes to go through all of it. There's uh, some firearm qualifications, background checks, and a lot of stuff that has to go on for, for that you can't see because you can't just every hand everybody. And we had a, we had a few up here for a long time with you guys. Yeah, Gary and um, Terry. Terry, no, who was up? Who's our other deputy up there? Mark? Eric. Eric, yeah, Bowers. Yeah. Um, and again, what, I guess we have, to, we have to release money for these guys <laughs> so they can have a class. So that's one of the uh, challenges. But uh, no, I, I, you know, it's education. We'll be, I, you know, I think this is all going to work out. I mean, heck, people still poach white deer. You know, the fly stretch. How many years have they been doing that? Oh yeah. Um, if you could get someone up there, that's yeah. you know, you're going to get the golden ring. So this this has been my uh, my frustration in the last year. Uh, certain streams, I've, I've had very good luck at catching people in preseason. White deer, for whatever reason, every time I get there, they're already gone. Um, please, if you see people poaching in white deer, give me a license plate. Um, I am so. <laughs> That's um, a week. They're usually there Monday, Tuesdays, or Wednesdays. It's uh, yeah. Monday through Friday. Every time that they're there, except for the time I am. Um, I know. Just hit and miss. It's 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 tough, guys. It's tough. 
just the fly stretch or the whole screen? The whole screen. <laughs> the whole screen. Okay. How about the fly stretch this past year? What did you hear about that? Fly stretch has been good. Um, when I check people up there, they often don't even know I'm checking them. I'll, I'll get to them, I'll see them fly fishing, I see their license display, I don't see any fish on the person. This is all through binoculars. I walk out of the woods because I, I don't want to interrupt good fishing. Um, so most of the time when people are there, they don't even know I am. Uh, but I have not had issues up there this last year. And I do check. <laughs> were, were they catching pretty good? From the people I've talked to, yeah, White Deer's, White Deer's been very, very good to people this year. Um, as a matter of fact, the, I, the whole season's been good to to everybody. Uh, we got a, uh, on, the, on the lower stretch, we got a lucky truck from uh, Sunscale, further down south. They had some monster fish on that truck. They were looking, they were looking to unload. Um, we had a bit of an issue with one of our hatcheries, so we got a, we got a whole bunch of fish we weren't supposed to have. Uh, it was a good day. So, <laughs> I was doubling down on certain spots. That creek was good for quite a while. So, so anything else, guys? Yeah, yeah I do have one. Uh, no Lake Erie questions. Uh, yeah, this was about here. Oh, no. Yeah. I can't help you. No, I know. <laughs> uh, there, I understand we lost some more water out there to what uh, help uh, for the right way to fish now. We lost? Uh, that's what I understand. Yeah, we keep buying leasing properties uh, up there. I it's understand like it's that we lost. Uh, uh, I don't know about that, right? Well, we lost a section from uh, Foley's Camp around downstream about three miles on the uh, uh, lakeside or the northern side of that stream. If you guys aren't familiar, Erie, we, you pay the stamp for Erie, and then that goes into a fund. And with that fund, I mean, since I've been on the board, we have bought miles, leased miles and miles and miles of acres up in that watershed. And then, uh, we, and then with that money, we partner with a lot of the different groups up there, the Sons, and uh, um, they do all. We're actually going to start getting involved with, uh, with restorations of these streams, knocking some of these shelves out so these fish can move up, you know, some of those trips. Um, but it, it's, it's a great, it's a great um, process with the community, with the anglers, and uh, with us and these partners that, uh, uh, and we've, we, we, I mean, every meeting we're looking at buying, leasing more properties, buying houses, buying huge lots, and then, um, you know, with the Conservancy or, or the, uh, what, yeah, with the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy and pulling money together to get these big tracts of land on the area, both sides of the street. So it's really been a success story. I don't know about that, Rick. Yeah. I thought we just purchased the whole stretch of land up there, or leased. Yeah, I think we just got a whole stretch. We just oh. up above Follies. I mean, yeah, oh, this is this starts right there in Follies. Yeah. I'm just glad we don't have to do that around here. At least to get on, you know. And, but you know, and another thing, like out there at Erie, there on 20 block, you know, we stop the daylights out of a bit, but right there above Route 5 for what is uh, quite a ways upstream there. That's all leased by a certain fellow. We all know who he is. And, uh, he don't allow any fishing, and there's, he has ground over on 20. Well, that's non-navigable water up there, so they could do whatever they want with their property. That's the difference between that and Penn's Creek. You know, that's one of the differences. It's non-navigable. There's trips. There's watersheds up there. So, but uh, isn't there a way that you guys, as a fish commission, can come up and set up? A, hey, if uh, we're stuck in the buff or below your property, then you want to post this? Can you make this nursery water? Uh, you know, that would shut a lot of this stuff down. Yeah, I know that's been discussed. I don't know how to get around it. The fish swim up and down the stream. Because uh, everybody in this room is paying for the fish here, but then they're the only ones that can fish out the water. So. so the one thing to always add is that the state of Pennsylvania is very, very protected by the citizens and their rights and their land rights. And, you know, uh, although we are a government agency, we can't always just say, hey, this is going to be how it's going to be. Really, you know, the way it's written, like yeah. Jacob said, that under the Constitution, the rights of the water are for everybody, all the constituent, everybody in Pennsylvania. 
most of this. So, uh, uh, but up there with the with the un, with the navigable, you know, that's not navigable water up there. They have different rules. So, uh, uh, no, I don't know. Anything else? Just be yeah, avid. I mean, on rapid, on rapid run. Or on rapid run, have they done any checking on the stretch? They don't stock anymore from Rapid Run Camp down to Wabash Road. Has there been any? Any? I can't answer. I can find out. I don't know. I mean, I, they probably do. I mean, um, I mean, I think they should report on the on the stream. Is that stock? Is it stock that Rapid Run? Not that part. They don't anymore. They used to stop it once a week for about five weeks. Now they don't even touch it. Yeah. And I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Is that the habitat? Or is the habitat changed there? I'm not. They consider it wild trout water, I guess. Yeah. Jerry, is there a swift yeah. run that runs into Penn's Creek? Yeah. Yeah. Where's that start? We were just. Is that a. I don't know where it starts. I know where it dumps in. Where does it dump in? Uh, Mountain. Yeah. yeah, between the tunnel and uh, it's below the tunnel at. Uh, yeah, that swift run is. Pope Patty. To go from Pope Patty down. Yeah. Oh, that's where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Panther Run over there too, right? Yes. Panther Run, Swift they Run. It comes down off White Mountain. Yeah. Got it. Well, that's one of the things we continue to do, and we've been doing, uh, and. and thousands of miles of these unassessed waters we're doing. We're still going to continue to do that from the wild trout standpoint. And then we have the partners like Bucknell and the local colleges around here, Lockhaven and Lycoming that help us out. But, um, you know, that's something we, we do. We, we, every, meet, every year we do about 400 streams um, where we assess them and classify them as Class A or wild trout waters. So, and we have a lot in our area here. Um, you know, obviously, this is a good area. You know, we can get a lot of that. So well, that's about it, guys. Thank you again for you know your your help and all that. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, you guys heard a lot from me. Um, I thought it was important, and uh, as you did too. And uh, thanks. So we'll we'll get another. We'll work on something else down the road. Thank you. All right. Thank you.